So they say that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the next best time is right now. Well, I don't have 20 years to wait, so let's just build it. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is make our planter, because otherwise we're just going to be getting dirt everywhere, and uh, mom's really not going to be happy with this on that one. Some simple loop cuts thrown in, extrude some legs, make the lip, extrude the interior, and then bevel the heck out of all the edges. I used a weighted normals modifier in conjunction with a bevel modifier to reconfigure my normals as well, just so that I didn't need to mess around with a subsurf. It just makes the process a little bit easier, you know? Now that I've got somewhere to put my soil, it's time to get a little dirty. Like all great things in life, it starts with a plane. They say that, right? We've got to make sure that it fits the dimensions of our planter first, and then I go about adding some loop cuts to even things out a little. That's because I want to subdivide and conquer using multiple displacements to create random terrain. By using procedural textures within Blender, I'm able to generate terrain incredibly easy, which is also open to redesigns. Now, I need to manually terraform the larger elements of the soil so I just use proportional editing to move it around and my modifiers will just update it automatically. I can also check on these buttons in my modifiers to view my edit with modifiers visible. Now I'm no expert, but that's a pretty good dirt patch. All right, figuring out how to get a cylindrical object to bend like that would be a nightmare. However, I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a particular modifier that can get it done pretty easy. I just need to create a single vertex, and using the skin modifier with a subsurf on it, I can just extrude vertices to create the basis of this trunk. I can scale points in and out by using Control A, and extrude vertices off in any direction when I want to create branches as well. To start defining a little bit of the bark, I decided to use a displace modifier with some procedural noise. It adds a little bit of irregularities to our trunk, which we are going to develop more in a minute here. From there, I'll go ahead and just add some shape variation and even branching paths for our tree. To smooth out these intersections, we can use the branch smoothing slider in the skin modifier. Adding a few more branches off of the larger branch is also integral to making this tree look a bit more believable. And really that's what's going to take up most of your time probably on this project. Sadly, that's one area that I couldn't really find a more procedural approach to that really looked convincing enough. Now, I want to take a look at adding more of that texture to the bark geometry. I've got to warn you though, there's enough displacement here to make you shout Eureka. Each modifier is used for a slightly varied design. However, the overall approach is to add some definition to the bark. It's also contingent on your subsurf modifier's level so play around with that to get something that works best for you. I'll be upfront, I really wasn't able to get something I was entirely satisfied with, since my experience working with Blender's procedural textures uh, leaves something to be desired. That being said, with some fiddling around, I was able to manage a decent enough design that I felt at the very least didn't detract from the final result. And it's like they say, sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes you just suck at Blender's procedural textures. As we continue on, our tree is going to need some kind of foliage. Otherwise, we just have a dead tree, and I like to consider myself a bit of a green thumb. My foliage is very simple, but the amount of time you'd want to spend on your leaves may differ depending on your project. I make a simple branch out of a circle, and I add some subdivisions so I can add a bit of a curve to my branch. To add some randomness to it, I use the random proportional editing fall off. Note to self, don't use that. Uh, it's terrible. Your branch looks terrible. Instead, just go with the default smooth and just give it a gradual bend. See? Easy. Add a little bit of girth to the branch as well, and I'm ready to pretty much call that done. So let's pop this on our tree using a simple hair particle system. By default, it'll instance at the base of our tree. No instances are getting left behind in this video though. We need to indicate we want to include all of the mesh data from our modifier stack, otherwise it has no idea where we actually want it to go, since this entire asset is currently housed within our modifiers. But we still need some leaves. 
Like my branch, my leaves aren't really that much more effort. Simple planes are great. You can bend them and warp them, shape them and move them, kick them around if you want, they're great. I move the verts around and I throw a subsurface on it to make it look a little less jagged. Then I get to placing. There is 101 ways you could do this, however sometimes it's just best to roll up your sleeves and place them yourself. A few random rotations to add to the organicness of it, and I'd already forgotten this wasn't a real branch. And because we had set up our particle system already, they're just going to work. But we're looking a little sparse, so let's do some 1 plus 1 equals 3 and add some children to the mix. Again, I'm a simple man, so I'll take the simple option wherever I can get it. Now, we're looking a little too stale with all of these branches, so I'm going to go and bump up the roundness of it a little bit to spread them out slightly. We're also getting branches in areas that really don't make a lot of sense, so let's fix that. Under vertex groups, you can see that we have an option for density. This is going to be our golden ticket. Let's wrangle up some verts at the tips, put them in a group called leaves, and we'll use them as our target areas. Now our leaves and branches only show up at those areas of our mesh. Still, we're looking a little sparse in some areas. To fix that, I'm going to go and change the emit from option under source to be verts rather than faces. That will help fill in all those areas with no help needed from our old friend Bosley. Get it? Because it's a hair particle system. All right, tough crowd. Now, the beauty of doing this tree procedurally is that I can make any adjustments I want pretty easily. I move my branches over just a little bit to make room for the younger, cooler branch on the block, and then I make sure to also assign these verts to the leaves group. And upon leaving edit mode, I can find that my tree has pretty much developed itself. The final step of our little bonsai is to give them roots. This part is just tree trunk the sequel because I'm using the same process from before. I just steal a vert from the tree and I push it out to make it look rooty. The beauty of this is that I have the displacement all set up for these verts, so I don't need to goof around with all of that all over again. Rinse and repeat for as many roots as you want, and you've got yourself a bonsai tree. Well, I hope you guys have learned a thing or two, because I certainly have. If this video helped you out, gave you a laugh, or it made you cringe at my terrible jokes, drop us a like and maybe hit that subscription button as well. Because let's face it, even if you cringed, you liked them a little bit. Also, make sure to vote on our next video over in our community tab. As always, I've been Chunk. This has been Let's Build It in Blender. Later, skater. What's a tree's favorite beer? Well, that's easy. That's root beer. What did the tree... <clears throat> what did the tree do when the bank closed? It opened its own branch. <laughs>